Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrator pan and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are. This is episode 13? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) For September the 16th, 2019, this is the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with Diane and Constance. Hello, Diane. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, everybody. All right. This week, the recommended video was a video from our favorite art teacher, art coach, uh, Stefan Bauman. Yeah, he does some outstanding videos. Unfortunately, I can never afford to uh, sign up with any of his courses, but maybe someday in the future I will. And the focus was in order to improve your art or to help you improve your art, to give yourself a purpose for creating specific pieces of work, enter in contests. Now, you can enter in contests online, you can enter in contests uh, locally, but art contests, art exhibitions. And by doing this, it helps you focus on a particular piece of work because you will be able to see what previous contestants have entered and for you not to get depressed, not to be afraid to compete against these other artists, but uh, concentrate and focus on doing the best work that you can. The side benefit is if you win in one of these contests, if you win a placing or you win an award, this will help your art career. Um, Diane Constance. You guys agree with that? You got anything to add to that? Um, <laughs> I think it is true to an extent. Um, you know, you you can see the previous work that's been entered, and you know where the level of um, quality is, and whether you fit in that, or or think you fit in that, or can compete with those people, and it can drive you to um, try to do better. I don't know that you need to do contests in order to do that, though. I mean, I'm pretty self-disciplined, I guess, so um, it's not really a problem for me, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it does to some extent, especially if you can see or go to the shows, even if you don't make it in, if you can go to the show and see the other paintings in person and see what the level is and the quality. I think it can. you can see a lot of... Um, 
really good paintings that way. Yeah. And that can, and that can help you. They can help you learn because you can learn from other artists and see well, how they do that. How do they, cause that's, that's what I, when I go to museums or if I go to a gallery and, and I look at the other art, I'm something that catches my eye. I immediately start trying to get up close and say, well, how do they create that? How many yeah. do they do here? Uh, what kind of varnish do they use? And I, I'm really interested in the, in the construction and the, uh, the, the technique. And that's, that's how I learn, you know, myself. Yeah. You can see that in person. It's hard to see that on, in paintings when you're looking at them online. Um, you really can't see that kind of detail as clearly anyway. It's really hard to do that. But in person, it's really, you can really kind of pick them apart. Well, another thing online, um, by just not randomly picking Pacific online content or different online contests and then paying the fee and joining. No, you should do some, some investigation work. You should look at the previous exhibits to see uh, what the genre is. If you're an abstract painter, obviously you don't want to go and enter in a representational contest because you're, you're going to fall flat. You're wasting your money. But yeah see what who the winners were what the what the quality is of the winners and above all do not compare yourself to them and don't get depressed i think a lot of people say oh my god you are so good so talented there's no way i can get no this is something to help motivate you and uh, inspire you to to work harder and to uh, to achieve Right? That's like, what I looked at. Yeah, and you don't want to just look at the other art. You also want to look at who the judge is because, you know, where they're coming from and what kind of art they like and, um, you know, what, where they are in the art world. Like, are they a curator of a, new, you know, big museum or are they just a local, you know, another artist or, you know, who are they and where do they come from? Cause that can have determine too or help you can determine whether that's, uh, um, contests that you want to enter because if they don't like the kind of work, you know, if you can look at past things that they've judged and they don't like the kind of work you do, then you're wasting your money as well. Yeah. You know, even though your painting might be really good and if it's not what they, the kind of thing they like, then they're not going to pick you. Cause it's uh, like Stephen Bauman, you know, talks about the secondary purpose of doing this is building a resume and uh, building. So you, you want to, uh, you, you have to spend some time, you know, investigate just like as if you were going to start approaching galleries. If you had your portfolio and you were going to different galleries, you want to investigate to see if you are a right fit. Are you a right fit for that gallery? Same way with these contests, regardless if it's online or local or not online or whatever. Constance, you've been quiet. What have you got to say about all this? Go on, speak up. Well, I noticed that he said that, um, you know, you should try to pick three contests uh, to enter a year. And he says, maybe pick one that's a little bit higher than you might expect to enter that you think that you may win in. And then to pick two that that look like they might be sort of easy to, to win so that um, you might get a ribbon, you know, to help bolster your confidence you know and um uh, yeah that's a very good advice yeah i you're uh, right. I, I completely forgot about his advice on that that uh yeah it's also important not i mean not to um necessarily you know i mean it's it's great if you win if you play something and you get a ribbon or some money or something but even just getting in the shows if you can get into a show a lot of times you yeah. don't know who might see your work or you know you can still put that on your in your portfolio like as as right. a thing i mean it's not it's better to have you know i won first place in that show but <laughs> even sometimes even just placing getting into a show isn't is enough that's a big you know uh, accomplishment yeah. it, exact absolutely it depends uh, on the level the level of the yeah. truth. some of these shows you know mm -hmm. not everybody uh is accepted they may say call the artist but okay and then it's a 25 dollar entry fee or whatever but then you know you're well there's different types of shows too you have juried shows 
as well as um, their shows that if you're like a member of an organization, they have shows just for their members. I mean, there's show, I mean, there's all kinds of different shows. So that determines a lot of that too. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. I mean, it's always better to have um, juried shows on your resume. If you've gotten into juried shows, it's better to have those as opposed to just a flat out call for artists. And that that's what in my in, in my uh, uh, investigation and uh, and trying you know looking for shows and everything. That's the advice that I've followed uh, that uh, Stephen Bauman you know and I think someone else also mentioned it. I forget who. Maybe it was Sergio Gomez you know who mentioned it. and uh, looking for uh, jury shows. Uh, and I'm also on an international focus. Brennan Carey, that's who it was. I couldn't think of his name, right? In one of, in one of his, his uh, free webinars, he talks about and helping you uh, gain uh, international recognition uh, is to investigate uh, and participate, if possible, in uh, international juried shows, particularly shows that are associated with a uh, nonprofit organization or that's funded by nonprofit organizations because these are where the curators and the uh, a lot of the art collectors and the uh, the cr art critics these are the shows that they investigate these are the shows that they uh, visit because your commercial galleries are only going to promote artists who sell for them because, and that's nothing, that's not bad. Commercial galleries, it's a business. They want to make money. So, but these nonprofit on these international shows are interested in promoting artists for the sake of art, art that are talented and especially uh, emerging artists. So this is how you can, uh, it's a, a little extra step toward gaining international uh, recognition. You guys got anything that, you know, add to that? No, <laughs> no. I mean, I've been out. Of, I've been away from this part of this for so long, for so long, because I've been doing jewelry for so long, and I've just started doing the art part of this again for just what about maybe not even a year. So, I mean, yeah, I I think I mean it does take time to investigate the different shows and to narrow down the list because if you start especially online now nowadays you research these shows and there's so many that you can enter and you know there's fees involved and if you get in the shows and they're not in your area you have to worry about shipping the paintings and um you know there's a lot more to it than just entering shows you have to do a lot of um, investigation find out where they are and um you kind of you have to keep track of where your paintings are going, what shows you've entered different paintings in. When you start entering a lot of shows, it's really hard to um, you really need to keep good bookkeeping on where things are are at and what you know what shows you've entered. So especially, you know, yeah, especially if you're going to be entering the, the, the more traditional, the physical, yeah, the yeah. physical shows, absolutely, yeah, yeah and uh, you know, and and. You, you, yeah, you don't want to get accepted in two shows and have them coming at the same time. Like, and you entered the same painting. Like, you know, then you're you're not helping yourself at all. <laughs> yeah, you're crossed. You're crossed and then accidentally send something to the wrong place, yeah. or and then I, you're wasting your money too because you're paid the double fee for yeah, one painting. When we talk about the uh, you know the physical shows, the Stephen Bauman's recommendation of three shows a year that makes sense for that. Absolutely, you know, it makes sense. But then there's the other side. For us poor folks, <laughs> don't have a lot of money to pay these fees and then pay for the shipping and then pay for the crating and on and on and on and on. There yeah, it gets is, pretty expensive. <laughs> there is, thank God for the internet. There is the international, the electronic shows. And more and more, what I'm seeing, lots of more, especially international galleries, are starting up 
an electronic version of themselves, an electronic gallery of associated and connected with the physical gallery. And a lot of them are being funded by nonprofits. That is what I am finding. And those are the shows that, which I have focused on. Uh, there with the electronics, uh, now they are setting up, like I've got a show, I think I've already announced this once, I've got coming up in an actual physical gallery exhibition coming up in October in Zurich, Switzerland. There's no way I could afford to send my art to Zurich, Switzerland. No way. But I was invited and I applied and my image was sent to them. They are going to put it in the, within the gallery with physical works of art. They're also going to have these large 55-inch monitors throughout the gallery. And my work will be flashed on one of those monitors along with several hundred other people. But that's, you know, I'll get a certificate of participation. And I, I've in, I am in a show in Zurich, Switzerland. I mean, how exciting is that, you know? <laughs> pretty darn exciting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a step in a positive direction, you know what I'm saying? That's the 21st century way of doing it, you know? And there's no way 15 years ago that would have happened, you know? Now, there are other galleries that are doing that same, very similar thing, you know? And so using the same judicial process – judging process of of uh looking and making sure that your art matches with you know the the other the art that the, the gallery is uh accepting and also checking the fees because you definitely i mean some of them you know you, and you have to watch out for the uh the scams and you know somebody says yeah give us a hundred dollars and we'll no i'm sorry that's don't sound right yeah <laughs> Luckily, there are also several resources on the internet where you can, where scams are recorded, and you can judge it and check out the scams. You know, so you have to use some common sense. But going through just as if I was was going to investigate physical galleries, you do this with the electronic version too, and it is highly possible. My focus, reason why I wanted to, uh, I recommend Stephen Bauman's video about entering contests and everything is one to help you for those listeners to encourage you to take your art to a new level is by identifying a particular show you would like to enter your piece in Two, to help you and decide which show to motivate you to, to enter these contests, to get your art out to the world. We share amongst ourselves several suggestions from coaches and mentors across the internet. You know, we watch a lot of videos. How do you know that those always work? The case of Stefan Bauman's advice, I took his advice to heart and looked. It worked. It works. <laughs> the last episode I mentioned that I'm, I am booked up for uh, September, October, November, and December, an exhibition or a art show, an art contest, all because of Stefan Bauman's recommendations. Some of them were free, no cost entry fee, and some of them are entry fees. But I took, and that's where my focus is to create my art now, has been preparing for the for these shows and everything. So this is an example of this this stuff. This stuff does work, folks. And uh, like the video, uh, Diane, I also recommended Gary Vanacek. Uh, he says that, uh, he gives advice all the time, but he says, uh, 99% of the people won't follow it. Right. This is a good example here. Yeah. Well, even seven Bowen was talking about, um, Eric Rhodes program and what he had to say about uh -huh. you know, the, the, um, artists that, you know, he had 900 artists there and he said, he's right now what maybe one or two out of the whole crowd would do all the steps that, that are needed. So it, it does take a lot of persistence and it does take thick skin and, um, you know, you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep entering things and keep doing it because as soon as you stop, 
you know, you could have, the next step you took might have been the one that would have done it for you. And guys, uh, lately I'm even guilty of I'm not good enough. I need more practice. And especially not with the jewelry end of it because I feel proficient in that because I do, I'm doing shows and signing up for shows for that. But with the art part, I'm guilty of I need more practice. I'm not good enough yet again because I know what my quality was there for a while and I'm not there yet again. And I think I need to be there again to, in order to sell again yet, but I need to. And I'm going to stop you right there in the track. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there in your tracks. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that where I'm, what I'm feeling, you yeah. know, and I need not to be like that. Right. Get rid of that negativity. And mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the negative self -talk and I caught myself. <laughs> I was sitting there working on the jewelry today, and I, when I was listening to Stefan Bauman's thing, and I thought, you know what, he is so dead right. And I've been sitting here feeling that way about my work. And when he said that about what that guy said about people not doing, taking the right steps toward making this making themselves do what they need to do to get further in their career because they don't think that their stuff is good enough to show when I've got a whole house full of paintings that need to be sold and I'm not selling them because I'm not able to paint as good as I was at one time. But what am I, you know, I need to start doing something in order to sell some of this stuff so I can buy the art supplies to start painting like I was at one time. Yep. So I really do need to sign up for that. Well, that video there. And start that video posting are, the daily painting things because I have got hundreds of paintings in this house that need to be posted and sold. <laughs> the video that I recommended was uh, he had recorded it in 2017. And I like when he used the example when he said he signed up for that course. And, of course, they have a, you know, they had a f private Facebook group. A lot of these courses do where people can, members can discuss and someone said, posted, well, you know, you're already established. You're already a known artist. You know, what are you doing in this, in this course? I thought that was so wonderful. He said, well, yes, but only amongst my students. The major art collectors don't know I exist. And that just astounded me, you know? Well, the thing is, you, it's not, it's a nonstop thing you have to constantly do right. it. it's not something like you do it and it's done and you you don't have to ever do it again you have Let to me, constantly update yeah. have to constantly keep up with all the new stuff that's the new technology and everything that's going on it it's like it's like and i'm gonna say you know they started this thing with country music last night but before that loretta lynn used to say she says i can't give it a rest she said she said because as soon as i stop being out there they will forget me and go on to somebody else. She says, I can't stop. And she's right. Because when you stop, they forget you and move on. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of other people that will fill that slot up. Yep. That's, and that, that's what amazes me that uh, it also, it amazes me and it also kind of depresses me because I've, in our, in our groups, you know, that we met, I've written, just have to keep after it all I've the time. Artists that are my age, and they've been act, an active working artist ever since they were teenagers. At versus right. versus, I but haven't. You can't let up. And exactly. they've been pursuing their career and everything. And you look at their resumes, and boy, they've got all these different galleries or whatever. <laughs> but they're not doing anything. I mean. You can take a day or two to feel sorry for yourself every once in a while, but you better get off of that pity party in a hurry because if you don't, you're going to be screwed. <laughs> you get, you get such, and when you talk, talk to them, I'm not saying any names in particular, but and in fact, you two probably don't even know, you know the people that I've talked to, but the, they have such a jaded attitude of, well, you know. Well, the thing is they, they did okay the way things used to work, and they – expected it to continue but things change you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over because everything changes so you have to constantly update you have to constantly you know stay ahead of what all that you expect from a planet that's whirling through space as fast as <laughs> what you are that's what i think do you ever see that thing on facebook where it showed how the planet is moving through space we i think that we're just stuck in front of the sun going around and around and around and around 
<laughs> but when it showed that one picture, I put it on my Facebook thing, my Facebook page, because I, I was astounded when I saw how we actually move through space. And we think we're just going around like this in front of the sun, but we're not. We're like hurling through space at such a oh, massive. What? So what, you got, you're going to get unbelievable. You're getting yourself some seat belts so you can attach yourself to your chair. <laughs> you better keep your feet. Planted firmly on the ground. You think a hurricane's bad. <laughs> it's a good thing there's gravity or we would be off of this planet in a hurry. <laughs> I can oh, see conscious walking, walking around and making sure she's got, you know. Uh, Better put some lead in your shoes so yeah, you stay you know, on the ground. <laughs> you know, those lead weights, you know, carrying her with her. So they ain't going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I hope there's not any extraterrestrials because I don't want to go. I want to stay here. <laughs> God, I don't want to know about them. They just stay up there where they belong because I don't want to know. <laughs> How the heck did we get into from Stephen Bauman working? <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> We're hurling through space so fast. <laughs> We're talking about change and how fast change can happen. I mean, it happens fast. Yeah. yeah. Fast. And the Think technology has changed so we've much. We've been here on the planet, how old we are and how much has changed since we were children. Think yeah. about it. When I was a child, there was no television. Right. <laughs> and then there was black and white ones <laughs> for a long time. There was no there was television no, when no, I was a no, child. Right. No, you know, we used to go. And to now. I'm sitting in front of a 55-inch television. Think about it. My, That's the difference. When I was a child, there was no television. And I now I'm sitting in front of a 55-inch television. My grandparents I, had a 26-inch had a uh, color console, and we used to like to go and visit them because we got a chance to watch color TV, especially the Walt Disney <laughs> show on Sunday nights. Oh, we used to love it. <laughs> <laughs> but we had yeah, a black and white. We just listened to radio. I mean, that is wild. There yeah. was no television when I was a kid, child. No television. Just radio. Yeah. And that was a big thing. All right. All your radio. listeners are going, all right, old, old farts, quit talking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Move on now. But, I mean, that's something to think about. Yeah, well, when Stephen Bauman, I mean, he uh, was a lot of part of his of his his discussion. You know, he talked about how in the you know in the eighties, how you know <laughs> galleries used to promote you and they used to do mm -hmm. advertising, you know, and everything a stipend to live on and yeah, you know, just to paint for their gallery. Boy, that and now they look at you like, what do you mean you want to show paintings in this gallery? Who are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> impress me first, and then we'll talk about it. I mean, I'm so tempted to walk into a gallery and say, how much you pay me to paint? <laughs> how much do you pay your artist to paint, paint yeah. painting for your gallery? Yeah. That's what I need to question. First question out of my mouth. See how quick I get kicked out the door, you know? <laughs> and how much true, you they used to do that. Yeah. That it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's so All right, we, we suc successfully gen uh, generated, <laughs> <laughs> degenerated, I guess, or whatever. We've gone down the, the beaten path. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. Let's offer our uh, tips of the week. And last week worked out really well. So we're going to offer all three of us a tip. <laughs> Constance making hand singles. I mean, Constance, I don't read sign language. So <laughs> she's making, she, she hadn't thought of her tip. Ah, uh, and no, you're not going to give your tip that you said your friend of yours said one time. We're not going to have that. That tip doesn't work. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, con uh, wait. Let's go with uh, Diane. Lead off with Diane, and she's thinking she's got that. Thanks. I know. I'm thinking. <laughs> she's got that, that thoughtful look on her face. I'm just trying yeah. the same thing I did last, like just being consistent and trying not to let. Um, all the negative talk take over in your head. It's really, it really doesn't do you any favors and it's usually not true. So, um, yeah, you just, you can't let that stop you. And, um, yeah, you just have to try to stay positive and not think about that too much and just keep moving forward. Yes. That's a, that's a very, very, very good tip. Yep. Okay. Constance, your turn. 
I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> not a good thing. Kasha's tip of the week is draw blanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't draw blanks. <laughs> <laughs> you go first class. Okay. I don't know. My you just caught me. Is, caught me. Is, uh, in line with when I mentioned, you know, contests or whatever. And of course, the one thing that we could all do is you could just go to Google and type in artist call, but then you're going to get thousands and whatever. And you're not sure. There is a unique site that I came across. It's called art show dot com that's www.artshow a r t s h o w dot com and it lists uh, calls for artists it lists artist workshops it lists tutorials and it lists featured opportunities and the west midwest south northeast outside the u.s online contests artists residencies just tons and tons and tons it lists the uh uh <clears throat> the websites and the information the you know uh start dates and end dates and cost and just it's it's just incredible so uh, that is artshow.com that's where i get my information from and I, I look at that site frequently to when I particularly look at the, the international online contests and I look for free ones first. And if I don't find any, then I look for um, the uh, lowest cost, you know, $10, $15, $20 here. And, you know, if I, and, and occasionally uh, a, the, and the juror, the curator they plus they have the sites so you can see previous winners and i do my, my i my investigation to see that why well, is it compatible could i uh, have maybe uh, ha at least have a chance i'm not wasting my money so that's the tip for me artshow.com constance you got one now Yes, I just thought of something that's pretty cool. I mean, I didn't know about them for a long time, and I've been in the arts and crafts business for quite a while. But anyway, um, it is an artist magazine. Well, it's not, yeah, it is an artist magazine. It's called Sunshine Artist. But another place that they have in here where you can go if you want to be in the arts and crafts magazine, which is a form of artist that is called um, Zapplication. And it's a place where you can go and put your <coughs> online application to set yourself up to be in arts and craft shows, which um, artists can go if you wanna sell in the arts and crafts fairs. And so you set up your account so um, you can, just set up an account there and have a booth set up with pictures of your booth and you can sign up for different shows through them. So that is something that I have been working on getting set up. So anyway, the magazine which has all the information for this is Sunshine Artist. And I've been talking about them for a long time. Is so. there a web website address or something, maybe? Is it yeah, it's called www.sunshineartist.com. And um, I think it's the application is www.zapplication.com. But anyway, if it's not on the application thing, it's, that will be on sunshineartist.com. You can find that information on there. But it's a really good magazine and it's a very great place to, so I've been working on trying to get that together. So I can just sign up for shows through that. Fantastic. We got any, any final comments before we wrap this up? Yeah. Try not to step all over yourself as an artist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a big tendency to step on myself. <laughs> That's right. Get those negative thoughts out of your head. You know, follow yeah. uh, you know, Diane's recommendation, her tip for, for the week. Okay, well, then that is it for this episode of 
our Artist Friends podcast, episode 13 for September the 16th. And I'm going to say goodbye. Bye-bye, Diane. Bye-bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. All right. Thank you so much for listening, folks. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.